<laughs> there you go. Your job is to resurface everything now, Lily. You can fix up all my games. Hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today we're going to be unboxing, trying out, and reviewing the JFJ Easy Pro Universal CD DVD Blu ray repair machine, otherwise known as a disc buffer, otherwise known as a disc resurfacer, whatever you want to call it. I normally refer to these as buffers, so that's what I say. Uh, now, I did end up getting a bit of a upgraded package here. Uh, I did pay for this myself. This wasn't offered to me or anything else, so full disclosure, I did purchase this. Uh, but I ended up paying just over $150. It ended up being like $157, including shipping. Uh, these can normally go on Amazon for $135 with just the basic stuff. Uh, but I noticed for $130, $157, excuse me, including shipping, I uh, ended up having an extra set of polishes, and it had like six extra uh, little buffing pads. So I decided to grab those because six extra buffing pads are normally $40 by themselves. So I said, you know, for about $20, I might as well get that and some extra polish and other stuff. Uh, so I'm going to unbox this. Before I unbox this, though, before I do, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to one of my followers on here, one of my subscribers. Uh, his name is Exit. And uh, he ended up donating $5 to me. He was the first person who ever donated any monetary money to the channel here. And this is back when you could donate directly to a channel through the channel itself without doing Super Chat or anything else. Uh, but he ended up donating $5 because I kind of half-jokingly put up on Twitter like two or three years ago. Uh, I think it was two years ago. Who th was going to buy this for me for my birthday? And uh, he just donated 5 bucks. He said, you know what? It's not that much, but... Uh, hopefully this can help you out get that disc resurfacer. Well, XC, I finally got it, man. I finally got it. So thank you very much for that donation. Five dollars after YouTube's cut, three fifty. But still, that three fifty definitely helped to get this. So I'll go ahead, unbox this, open it up, and everything. And uh, I am waiting to see what's all in here. So what I'm going to do for anybody who's asking any questions, like why would you get one of these? Why don't you try this? Whatever it is, uh, what I want to do is I want to unbox this thing first um, as I take the tape off, kind of in a iffy way. I like to unbox this first, and then once we have everything unboxed and looked at, I'm then going to cover why I got this and what recommendations I have, whatever it is. All right, so we have all the tape removed. Let's see what's in here. There is a small box, that's probably the extra supplies. And then here, in all the styrofoam, there is the JFJ Easy Pro, actually. Instructions. All right, that will be helpful to have just in case. And let me go ahead and remove the styrofoam if I can, possibly. Uh, you know what I don't like about styrofoam? You can't recycle this stuff. Bad for the environment. I guess it's really, really cheap to produce, but you cannot recycle it. Oh, here it is. All right. Let me go ahead and just take everything out the box first, and then we can dissect it all and see what we have here and just put this nasty, non-recyclable styrofoam back here. And box no longer need you. Guess what, Lily? You get a box that kinda, <laughs> the dog just jumped at that. <laughs> All right, so out of everything here, it looks like we have the JFJ Easy Pro, of course, it says, warning, for safety, always close lid before opening. Plus, plus, all right. Removes scratches as easy as one, two, three. And it has timers for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, one minute, and two minutes. It also advertised that it's Blu-ray disc friendly. Um, as I've kind of experienced, I don't really think that's much of an issue with mini disc buffers. Uh, I know some of them, like when Blu-ray started coming out, they would explicitly advertise it was safe with Blu-ray. But really the consensus I got was all of them were fine for Blu-ray, so eh. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty small machine. As you can see, there's that. And that's the back side there. It does not have, oh, that's a warranty sticker. It does not have like a switch. I was thinking there might've been a physical switch in the back, but it is in the front, so easier access there. That works out well enough. And let's see how well this thing opens and what all they included in here. So do not press on top while in use, noted. See to open this thing up. All right, we just removed those two latches and then 
Over here, got the uh, anti-static spray or cleaner to be used for the removal of minor surface scratches, dust buildup, and fingerprints to be used as a protective coating to help prevent minor surface scratches, dust buildup, and fingerprints to be used as th shine coat after the use of JFJ polish number two, shape before use. So really any type of like disc spray you had to clean off discs, this is pretty much that. It doesn't feel like they gave you that much either. Um, this is four ounces and you can definitely hear it like sloshing around in there. See, they didn't give you too much. They kind of cheaped out on that. Let's see, there's also advanced polishing shampoo. This side up, okay. This is number one. Number two, advanced polishing compound. Okay. So I'm not gonna go through all the directions right there because I'm not going to be resurfacing a disc immediately here. Uh, but let's see what else there is. Oh, okay, so this is just kind of the stop button here. So when you push this down, it's gonna press down all that and it'll run the machine. Then when you bring it up, it will automatically stop. All right, cool. And then just in here, that's where everything's going to touch. So as I understand it, you're supposed to take a buffing pad Put it right there, you end up sticking the disc right here with the uh, data side, with the laser facing upwards, not laser, excuse me, the label facing upwards. Uh, and then this ends up spinning everything while it gets buffed here on the pad or maybe the buffer spins. Yeah, that would actually make more sense. All right, cool. I've used two or three resurfacing machines before. They are awesome. I have not used one of these. Uh, I have seen a few game shops that have had this exact model and normally they end up upgrading because um, I mean, if you're a game shop and you're bringing in so much inventory, a single disc buffing machine is going to be really slow for your workload. For anybody who might be wondering, it does have a three-pronged power supply, so you are going to need access to ground. Hopefully you do have that. Some of you might say, oh, duh, all places have it. No, no, actually they don't. Uh, and then right here, let me go ahead and open up one of these buffing pads. So they come in something that looks a little bit like this. Go ahead, open it up. Looks like it's two to a pack. All right, and you can kind of just take it. All right, so black side, this should be facing up, or let's see, let's see. Actually, this would be all Velcroed. There we go, all right, sticks like that. You put it like so, no, that's gonna move around. So it has to go, black side's gonna go downward. Put that inside, make sure it sticks, and then there you go, that's where your buffing pad's going to go. It also comes with a few extra pieces as well too. So these are labeled explicitly as coarse. I'm just gonna take a look at them, not really use them. Uh, and these are essentially sandpaper, really. Uh, some people might be freaking out with sandpaper to a disc. Uh, these can actually be used for like very deep scratches, not so much gouges. You can fix gouges sometimes, um, but if you're running a disc through here for a few minutes and there's just a few scratches that are not coming out, Sometimes you can just take one of these and it will make your disc look worse at first, but you're going to use, you know, like something coarse to remove the scratches. And then you can use a regular pad to then polish it and make it look all nice and shiny and give it that finish. So just noted on here, I am definitely going to keep these because hopefully I won't have to use them, but I might have some bad discs in my collection that are going to need, you know, just that little extra oomph. Looks like we have extra buffing pads right here, or sanding pads, excuse me. So these ones are just the regular buffing pads. That's probably what I'm going to be using for the most part. Got some sanding pads right here, which, all right. Let me see how these are. Okay. These are going to be a little bit finer, not even a little bit finer, like quite a bit finer. So there'll be that. Whenever you use them, I'm going to have to look through all the instructions, of course, to see how to fully utilize this. Then it also comes with microfiber cloths, is what it looks like. Uh, I actually ended up ordering a pack of microfiber cloths. Funny enough, I think Magic Fiber. Uh, those were on a really good sale the same day I ended up purchasing this. So I got several of them. And I'm probably going to be using those. Um, and finally, let's check out the box right here, the white box that they sent out. So opening this here and what do you know no surprise but it comes with the extra supplies so we have more of these coarse pads we have more microfiber cloths uh more buffing pads and more polish as well too so if you end up getting this upgraded package you are going to get those extra things which is nice um so far from what i can say um you know just in terms of bang for your buck 
probably worth it just to get the one there. Um, like not, not just the basic one, get the upgraded one. As I said, I looked and to get six extra buffing pads, it's like 40 bucks. To get double, more than double of the supplies, you pay an extra 20 or so. Uh, so to me, that is worth it, at least in terms of you know, economy and all that. So this is pretty nice as well too, just kind of looking through this here and glancing over it, but it has full guides for minor scratches, how to utilize everything, for medium scratches, it even has tips for when you should end up replacing these because you can't just use one thing for forever. Uh, you are going to have to replace them. Uh, more medium scratch and then deep scratches and this is especially useful if you have any 360 games that have those circular scratches on them. Uh, fun fact, I actually used to, uh, because I had access to a disc buffing machine at work, uh, I used to end up being able to get uh, ruined 360 games, like Circular Scratch 360 games, for quite cheap because people would have them, they'd get a new copy of the game and be all angry that their old copy didn't work. So I'd buy their old copy for really cheap and then I could just take it into work, resurface it, and I have a new game added to the collection. So <laughs> it was kind of nice having that perk. Uh, but now I have my own resurfacing machine. So on top of that, let's also see how discs will go on here. So one thing I'm going to say from the instructions here is these are very poorly numbered. Number one is the polishing compound. Number two also says it's a polishing compound. They both actually seem to say the same thing. Yeah, just from a glance they seem to. Now the reason why I say this is poor is because uh, you're recommended to use number two first and then use number one. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to get juvenile here, but that's straight up what the instructions say. I've looked through the instructions on all these and it says what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the number two solution and put it all over one of these pads right here, one of the white pads. Uh, get it wet, get it saturated with this, and that's really mainly the first time. After that you could put on less and just apply it a little bit. But then, let's say you want to fix up a disc. So what you're supposed to do is, let's take this off, I'm going to take this, pop the disc on, you can then take this again, screw it so your disc stays in place, and then you end up pushing everything down, make sure it clicks, uh, let it resurface the disc, and then whenever you're happy and the actual scratches are removed, you can then polish it. So what you're supposed to do is then remove the pad you used for number two, uh, put a new pad on. You don't have to use new pads every single disc, you can reuse them. Uh, until they get worn down. But you have to put another pad on, a separate one I should say, uh, put the number one solution on there because this is supposed to polish up everything and then close this up. They recommend running it for a minute, pop it back open, and then you can clean off your disc and everything and it should be scratchless and pristine. Uh, so that's how these things are supposed to work. I think that's okay. Uh, the ones I used before, they just had one end-all solution which ended up polishing and resurfacing your disc. So that's why they said that the number two solution, this will definitely fix up everything, and using number one is optional. But I honestly feel like it should be the opposite. I feel like this should be number one because I care more about removing the scratches, and this should be number two because then I can polish them, make them shiny if I want to. Uh, so immediately that's something I don't really like with the marketing, but whatever, we have this here. So now you might be asking, why the hell don't you just stop talking and show this thing in action? Well, that's what I'm going to do. I've already found some games I want to test this on, so I'm going to grab some lightly scratch games, medium scratch games. I'm going to try and grab some deep scratch games as well too. I'm going to use this thing. So I'm going to set this up, show you all how to use it, and then I'm also going to give you a review on it as well too. So stay tuned for that. Actually, don't really stay tuned. It's more, it's going to be in this video. Everything's going to be in this video. It's not going to be split up. So yeah, let's try this thing out. All right, so right here we have the JFJ Easy Pro. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to kind of show you a quick run through of how I've been repairing my games. Now I've been able to do this successfully now. I have a good stack of games that I've been able to repair uh, and there's been some discs that I've brought back from the dead completely. Now the way that I've been doing this to test that they actually work afterwards is I normally take something 
um, that can be installed or can be ripped somehow easily and I just do a full rip afterwards after it has been repaired. Uh, so for the Xbox 360 for example you can install a game to the hard drive so I've done that with several games that either had issues or they were just really scratched up with PS1 and 2 for example. These ones you can just pop into a computer and run a program like ImageBurn to create a ISO image of some kind of the disc. So essentially just ripping the entire disc over to your PC. Uh, so that way you can make sure that you can read all of the sectors of the disc successfully. Uh, so, I know some people might be yelling at me that I'm, you know, touching getting this disc hold dirty. It doesn't matter because it's going to get repaired here anyways. Uh, now, I've had some pretty bad discs, and uh, I'm going to show you all some. So, post me. You, huh? post me. Make sure that you put in some before and after photos. Hey, you don't have to take that ad to with me. I was going to remember, but fine. I guess I'll put some in. Anyways, I have my setup here, so I will be doing an actual tutorial showing more in depth and kind of talking about a few other things of what I do. Uh, but I got my disc right here, which is Jet Moto for Jet Moto. I guess you can say for the original PlayStation. Uh, this should work. It should be fine. It's just I picked this up from a thrift store years and years and years ago, and it's scratched up because I got it from a thrift store. So uh, all you need to do is put the disc on here snugly, take the nut right here that this goes on. And one thing I had read online is after thousands of uses, this can kind of crack or get worn down. Most of the time, you really can't buy this separately, but if you contact the company, they're normally cool enough to give you one for really cheap or just pay shipping or something if you just want this piece. So that's going to be a tip for anyone if you have one that might be faulty or whatever. Anyways, kind of get it on snug enough. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. We're good on that. Uh, and then you have uh, four things that you can use. You have essentially uh, some really coarse sandpaper, which you are encouraged to use uh, if you're doing a heavily scratched disc. I've normally done it on all my discs. You're supposed to use this in 10 second intervals. Some people might do more. I've seen people use it for a minute or two. Um, but normally you're supposed to do it in like 10 second intervals and they recommend not doing it for over a minute. And it's one of those things too, if you go through this whole process and your disc still doesn't work, uh, then you can do it again. Uh, you can go through your discs multiple times and they're really not going to mess up all too much. So I'm just going to put this in right here. Just kind of get it all snug in. Make sure that snaps down. Turn it on and run this a few times. I just do 10 second intervals. Now let me take a look at this here. I'm just going to open it up. And your disc should look all frosty and nasty. And that is to be expected because, you know, this is sandpaper going directly to the disc. So I only did it for 30 seconds here, and I did three 10 second intervals. Then you're gonna to want to take your soft sandpaper. And with this, you don't wanna run it as much. Now, again, I've seen people run this for like up to one or two minutes. Uh, as per the instructions though, and this is kind of one thing I've noticed as well too, and I'll make a note of this also in my video where I show you all and I teach you all how to do this, like 10 seconds. In short, 10 seconds. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. All right, and that's it. And once you do a 10 second rundown, and you have to do that after you use the um, the coarse sandpaper. Now, if you notice, if you use this for a while, the soft grit right here ends up wearing down much faster than the more coarse one. That's just kind of, you know, to be expected and such. So this one's wearing down a bit and that's fine. The reason why I also mentioned 10 seconds and really stressed that is because I've noticed I, I did this with some other discs where I ran it for a while. If you do it for more than 10 seconds, you actually seriously run the risk of, I've noticed within the inner groove right here of the disc, it starts to warp a little bit. And it is recoverable to a degree, but I've actually just with all my months of, you know, comparing this and testing this out and kind of getting it down to a science here, uh, I've noticed that there's been discs where they work fine when they're scratched, you put them through here, and if you use this for too long, it will make the disc unreadable. So you have to kind of run it through gently again and make sure that you can recover it. But yeah, that's why. 10 seconds with the soft one. That's all you want to do. Now here, there's going to be a little bit of a difference. I'm going to show you all. First, you want to take the... I hate how they numbered this. So for this, for the first session, you want to take the number two polishing compound. You want to use number two. You would think you would do number one, number two. No, you, you go number two and then number one. Anyways, you're going to take the uh, pad that you're going to use for that. And just kind of put it on. 
and I'm going to move my camera here momentarily just to show you all what the inside's going to look like here. All right, so excuse me, it is a little bit dirty here, which that's easy enough to clean. You can just take a uh, paper towel and kind of remove that. Um, but this is what you need to do, or don't need to, but this is what I've been doing at least. I just take this thing right here, and I actually exhausted this, and I just filled this with water. Uh, you can just take this out, open that up, and what I do is spray this a few times. And that's all. Like three sprays, that's about all you need. And now, you could end up using this stuff. As I said, this is the compound that comes with it. Uh, but you know what? We got something better. We got something better. <laughs> this can throw some thing people for a loop. But check this out. Blad out. This ultimate compound for your car. Now, not only this has the benefit of being cheaper in the long run, it also ends up smelling a little bit nicer. It smells like, you know, like a hint of nice cinnamon. But on top of that, it also works better than the official stuff right here. So anybody who has this machine actually recommends just buying this stuff as opposed to using the JFJ stuff. Now, the JFJ stuff, they will, like, they'll recommend and say, hey, if you use anything that isn't ours, uh, you're not going to be supported, whatever, you know, what have you on that. Now, from what I've seen from reviews, it seems that getting non-JFJ pads, you can run into issues. But you're better off getting non-JFJ rubbing solution. And for this, this is what I like to do. Open that up. And I'm kind of just going to try and do this all one-handed. What you kind of do is I'll show you. Kind of get a dot there. Dot there, dot there, dot, dot, dot. Something like that. And then to close it, I'm just going to kind of aim it down just in case it sprays over there. Then what I do is you can use a multitude of different things to spread this out. I kind of just use this right here to spread it. And I kind of just go like that. And you want to go, make sure you go all the way from the inner ring all the way to the out. Just want to make sure you kind of cover everything like that. And you also want to make sure you rub this into the pad like I'm doing here. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is as soon as this starts spinning, if you just like leave these as is, it ends up spraying all around here. And I mean, that's just a perfectly good waste of your buffing compound that you could use to, oh, I don't know, fix up a disc. So, I'm almost done. I've seen some people use their fingers. I guess I wouldn't really recommend that as much because, you know, oil's on your hands and what have you. Uh, but now that that's complete, I'm going to just kind of move this over, take this, push it down. There we go. And at that point, you can run this for like one or two minutes at a time. So normally what I do is I run this for two minutes, open this up, spray again, reapply, put it in for another two minutes with the number two pad and number two compound. All right, so now that this is done, I'm going to take another look right here. And there we go. That's looking better than before. The only downside I noticed is there are a few scratches. I can kind of see right there, there's a few scratches left. And to be honest, if, if I ended up using the hard sandpaper on this more, I could get them out. But right now, this is more just a demonstration showing you all that this can be done and how to do the process. Uh, so... Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with the number one compound, which for the number one compound, I'm going to be using the ultimate polish right here. So I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to do two minutes on that. I did uh, four minutes in total on this, so I did two two-minute sessions with the number two compound. Now I'm going to do a two-minute session with the number one compound, and that's actually highly recommended, especially with these PlayStation discs right here, the black-backed ones. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. All right, so now that this is done, let's take another look here. I'm going to open that up, and there we go. It is looking, uh, you know, pretty enough for what it is. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this disc all cleaned up now because you don't want to use it while it's wet and while it has the polish all over it. So I'm just going to pop this off and, uh, you know, then cleaned off. And with all that being said and done, at that point we have a nicer looking disc. So... As you can see, that is about what we're dealing with here. Same game and everything. Uh, now all cleaned up, of course. And uh, the only downside is, really, as you can see, there's kind of... You might be able to see there's kind of like some buffing scratches on there, which are a little hard to get out, admittedly, with this machine, especially on these PS1 discs, man. Especially on these. However, it's looking much better than before. And, uh, 
that's about how the process is overall. So that's just kind of a quick start to finish on that. Occasionally you might have to do a disc multiple times and if those exact settings don't work for you, you might have to kind of play around with the formula so to speak, but that's about it. So let's get on to uh, my final thoughts on this. All right, so I've been using this device for just over six months. And at this point, you all might be asking, well, if you've made it to the end of the video here, thank you. But you're probably asking, is this worth it? I'll say I'm going to put this in the $150 price range because I've been seeing them. You can get them for about $130. You can get them for about $200 or just less than that if you decide to go and get uh, extra things such as what I did where I wanted to get the extra pads and the extra uh, liquids and everything else with it. Would I recommend this solution, the JFJ Easy Pro for, let's say, $150? Absolutely. Uh, I'll say it did take me some time to kind of dial everything in, and I feel like there's kind of a little bit of a break-in period, so to speak, and that's more with you just learning what discs that you're going to be working with, uh, what exactly would get your things up and running, if some of your discs can even be repairable. Because here's one thing I want to tell you all. I would recommend if you are going to be resurfacing your library, or even if you just want to take a look at what condition your discs are in, if you have something that is really scratched that you want to get repaired, uh, take it and just kind of put it up to a light. So the label is facing a light. And if you can see anything through the label itself uh, that actually looks like a scratch, like if you could see any visible scratches through the label, at that point your disc is toast. You cannot recover that. Unfortunately, the data is gone at that point. So you can make the bottom of the disc look really sparkly and pretty, but the data itself is gone. So if the game even boots at that point, if you're doing a game here, if that game even boots, more than likely you're going to run into issues at one point during gameplay, unless it is far enough in the disc to a point where it doesn't remove any data. It just removes something where the disc doesn't physically have data on that location. Now, right next to me, I have a stack of several games that I've been able to get successfully resurfaced. Uh, these are I think all of them here are actually thrift store finds. Well, aside from these two, these PlayStation games I have, uh, these were from a Blockbuster back in the day, back when, you know, they would finish renting things out and you could sell them. So they worked, to my knowledge, they just looked horrible. And then I was able to resurface them and they worked even better than before, so that was great. Now, if you're looking for anything more expensive, I don't have anything off the top of my head, but I will say if you're looking to get something like you're saying, hey, this is a $150 resurfacing machine, maybe I should get something that is $200 or $300, there's not really going to be that much of a difference. You're really not going to see that much of a difference in resurfacing machines until you're probably spending at least six or $800 on one. And at that point, you're going to get more into liquid-based solutions. Now, the other resurfacing machine, which I don't remember the model of it, but the other one that I had the most experience with, even to this day I had the most experience with, uh, was more of a liquid-based solution, where at that point, and I'm not talking about, you know, like the gels and polishes that we used here. I'm talking about you were able to load in two discs at a time, it was much heavier and everything, and then there were essentially these vats of liquid that you would be able to open up. You had to get them from the manufacturer. You would put it in, kind of load in your hose, and then it would get everything wet within the bay where the discs were getting resurfaced. So if you're going to go with something like that, I will say it is a much more costly solution. It will get your stuff done faster. It will also do a better job, and I'm not here to debate that. However, it is going to be more costly, and maintenance does get annoying on those. There were several times where if there was a part or two missing, we had to wait for a while, and we just had piles and piles of games and movies and music stacked up. And for the record, when I'm talking about this, I was using this at a mom and pop video game store that I used to work at in high school, so that's where my history from that comes into play, so just kind of clearing that up there. But when it comes down to it, I would say if you are just someone who you want to preserve your collection, you are going out, and especially, th this is me right here, if you're the type of person where you're getting a lot of stuff used, especially if you're going to thrift stores, maybe swap meets, other places where you can get media for good prices or cheap, and it doesn't look that good, trust me, I would recommend getting one of these things right here. Just for your own personal sake, it's great. Now... Who is this not for? If you're the type of person you only have like five or ten discs that you want to resurface, uh, even at that point, th this is how I'll look into it. 
a disc resurfacing job on average, like if I took my disc and went to a mom and pop video game store and paid them to resurface a disc for me, most of the time they charge about $3. I've seen anywhere from free to $4 a disc. I've never seen anywhere past four. And the reason why I mention that is because most places will do two or three dollars, some will do four. There's one place I know of that does them for a dollar, and I was going there before I ended up purchasing my own machine. And then sometimes it's kind of a rare thing to ask for, depending on where you live. So sometimes if you go in there with one game and you offer, and they might not even have the surface the the service itself, they'll just say, you know what, we don't really sell this service we don't do it for customers but because you're cool and you have one disc we'll just do it for free so it depends on where you go if mom and pop video game stores don't work maybe your town has a rental store i, I know in 2018 going into 2019 that's kind of hard to find but a rental store possibly uh public libraries are another option as well too don't do eb games or gamestop though and i'm not hating on them it's just that they don't have disc resurfacing units in store they send all that stuff down to their facilities in grapevine texas so that's where that goes at least i'm pretty sure they're located in grapevine either way it goes down to texas if they need to fix up anything and they don't offer any kind of those solutions you know for the home user so that's what I'm saying on there. But going back to this, I would say look at your collection, look at the type of person you are if you're wanting to fix these up or not, and if you're also wanting to put the time in there. And I would say if you have 50 discs or less that you plan on fixing up yourself, do not get one of these. Because I'm basing that on the fact that you'd probably be paying $3 a disc to have someone else do them, and at that point if you have 50 discs that you want to get fixed, you can go somewhere, pay the $150, and you're good at that point. However, if you have 100 discs in your collection that you need to fix, if you're constantly buying and adding things to your collection that you see are pretty scratched and you need to fix up, uh, then definitely consider one of these, because in the long run, that is going to be what will be cheaper, obviously. Now, it's not all perfect either. I will say this machine has absolutely frustrated me many times. Uh, when you're getting everything set up, when you're kind of going through that break-in period, so to speak, and when you are learning the proper timings and such and care for your discs inside of this machine, uh, it can take a lot of time. It is really a big time sink that you can put yourself into, unfortunately. So just kind of be prepared for that. On top of that as well, too, if you don't want to buy extra materials and such, like if you're just going to spend the $150 and that's it, you're going to be in for a bad time because you are going to have to replace your pads. You are going to have to replace your sandpaper. You are going to have to get more liquid as well, too. If you are going to get this stuff, I would recommend using the car polish. I, I, I swear, use that stuff. It smells nicer, it works better, and it is cheaper in the long run than the JFJ branded stuff. But some of the downsides could be if your timing is off, you might not fix something properly. You could actually add more issues to something. I had several discs, admittedly, where they worked fine before but they were just really scratched up and I wanted to fix them I put them through that machine I put them into my game system they didn't work I got unrecognized disc I got disc unreadable whatever it was depending on the machine uh, so that's why your timings are important as well on there too and that is why I also stressed really when you're using the coarse sandpaper and you go the soft one just do the soft one for like 10 seconds because if you do any longer than that not all the time but I notice that sometimes you can run into issues here and there where you'll just get a disc unreadable error of some kind, depending on what you're going to be using. So with that, I would absolutely say if you only have, you know, really valuable stuff in your collection that you're wanting to fix up, you might want to test this on some old Madden discs or something like that. So that's what I'm going to recommend as well, too. When you're learning this, use cheap discs that you have in your collection. Use stuff that you don't mind replacing. So if there's a game that you end up ruining, it's only $2 to replace it. It's only $5 to replace it. Or maybe it's... Maybe it's a Madden game. As I mentioned, you can probably get a stack of Madden games at a shop like disc only for really cheap and just kind of play around with those if they're scratched up. So it's really depending on what you want to do. But going back to it all, at the end of the day, I would say I do recommend this machine for what it does. Uh, for the price range as well too, I can absolutely recommend it. And I cannot recommend, I cannot recommend using any solution that would be lower than this. So... If you have a disc that just needs a cleaning, you can do that with a multitude of different ways, but using any of those putties to 
fix up your disc using toothpaste, using um, a disc doctor especially. Don't do any of that stuff if you're trying to be serious about preserving and fixing up your discs. Do not use any of that stuff. It doesn't work. I have been a believer for years that the only way to repair a disc is using a resurfacer. Whether you use something like this or you use something that is super industrial and could be two or three thousand dollars, that is completely up to you. But I will go on record in saying the only way to fix up a disc is to use a resurfacer. And for this price range for $150, it is absolutely worth it. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this very long video at this point, this has been months in the making, I feel like, because I've kind of gone back and forth here and there. But a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.